to have we're very happy to have Chen Yang Shu, who's going to tell us about local case stability. Thanks, Chen Yang. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Christopher. Actually, I think the uh, the program is called a singularity and the case stability. So I, I thought maybe it's a good topic to somehow to find something uh, to, to talk about something which is uh, related to both of them as a last talk. So that's why I choose to pick up this topic. So about local case stability. So in biological geometry, I mean, there is a well-known local to global correspondence, uh, which if you consider the local as chaotic singularities, then the global should be final varieties. And often we allow singularities here, like a, uh, final varieties with, with chaotic singularities. So, I mean, we have heard the global stability theory, like case stability, basically all the program. So now I want to talk a little bit about the local case stability. So, so first, what is local stability? I think if you haven't heard this, this kind of talk, then that might be the first thing come come into your mind. So historically, there was a well-known setting about which generalized the global stability of final varieties to the local setting, which I mean, in the global case, we are looking for a kind of isometric. And then in the local setting, we are looking for something called the Sasaki isometric. So I, I will only talk about the algebraic side of the story. So, so if you haven't heard this metric, it's completely fine. So basically, in this local setup, we only consider cone singularity. So not general character singularity, but cone. But here, Actually, usually when you think about cone, there is some like a safe direction, and then there, there is some like a base there. So, so here, we actually consider more general action. We consider there is a torus action, not just, just one, but some like a R copies of, of the gem group. So add some, some affine variety, which I call X, uh, which is spec R. And we assume that the, it only has one fixed point because we want to make it to be a cone singularity. So we'll, we'd better to just concentrate on one point. So, so we, then that's what we assume. There is only one fixed point. And uh, then this is our setting. So because T acts on this ring, we can naturally decompose it into weight space. And the fact that the, the, there is only one, one fixed point just basically just mean that, uh, let's say you assume everything is normal, that would basically just mean that the R zero is uh, isomorphic to the base field K. So, so here we all, always have R zero is isomorphic to K out of this assumption. So, so here R is some, some weight. So now we pull extra assumption that the, the singularity is not just the uh, adding arbitrary torus act, acting singularity, but it's some KLT singularity. And uh, now we pick up a second data, which is uh, some vector. So here vector just is just uh, the, the co-weight lattice, but now it has an R. So it's like a real co-weight. So then, so for any element here, we, we call it a vector. So, you probably see this in the talk of Howard Broom that you say that there's a torus action and then you try to find the vector on the, on the, on the, on the co, co, real co-weight. So in the local setting, so we want this vector something by the following that the C, the, the pairing between C and alpha. So here alpha is, is basically the, the, the weight here. So we want for all alpha such that the alpha is not zero. Our alpha is not zero. So it's some function. We do have some non-zero function with this co with this weight. And of course, we assume alpha is not equal to zero. Then we want this pair to be always positive. So 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 this this cone in the literature is called a rib cone. So, so you can think about that this cone, the vector, if you move along the direction of the vector, then 
it eventually just goes to zero, goes to the go to the fixed point. So you don't want some vector like you know kind of diverge. You want some like a vector if you go along it, it, it some converge to the to the to to, to the fixed point. And uh, then people ask a question like uh, whether this kind of thing has Sasaki Einstein symmetry, this x d. So I think historically, actually, people think about the thinking that the x is an isolated singularity. And then this, you can just refit on this data on the link, which is distance one from the singularity. Now it become a all dimension manifold. Then people ask whether this all dimension manifold has some Sasaki Einstein metric. But but you can basically recover every all the information on the on the on the holomorphic setting. So we work on the complex singularity. Then you can ask the equivalent question. And of course, one can see is actually a rational vector. So that basically just means it generates some like a GM action. And then if you take this to see module this GM action, because my X is KOT singularity, the quotient has to be log of final word. So for different choice of C, you might have different log of final word. I mean, one example in your mind, you, should, you just choose the, the point that you see N and then you choose different C star. And of course the quotient, you just got different way to predict space. And then there might be something like a ramified divider hanging around there. And uh, in, this, in this case, you ask whether this guy has Sasaki isometric is basically equivalent to whether this guy has Kahn isometric. But now because you have this branch divider, it's actually some kind of like a all before the Kahn isometric. So, so you, you immediately say that this is a natural, basically analog of, of the Kahn Einstein problem, but, but now in the cone singularity case. And then you can do the, like a, basically move all the discussions we have about final varieties into this setting. So for instance, you can define case stability notions like semi stability, uh, stability polystability and so on for X to C. So you basically you, you look at the, T equivalent, then GM equivalent to generation. So there are two factors. One is the fiber-wise T action, and then you, you have a GM action acting on the base. Then under that setting, you can define Fataki variant, and then you can just de define everything. So, so, so roughly speaking, basically you can think about that if the, if I want to define Fataki variant, if this guy is rational, then the Fataki variant is basically the Fataki variant of the generation of this. And then you somehow normalize in a way such that when for any real vector, you can choose a sequence of rational vector like a converge to it. And then the Fataki amount of the quotient will just converge to some number. And you can call that number to be the Fataki amount. But you, actually in practice, there is a more direct way to define it, but which we don't, we, we're not going to use it. So I'm not going to talk about it. So, so once you have this kind of stability, stability notion, then of course, next thing you can ask is uh, is the uh, YTD conjecture, like you know the existence of uh, Einstein, Sorry, the Sasaki Einstein metric is equivalent to that. This this data is uh, is k poly stable, and uh, in the isolated similarity case, this this was proved by Collins and uh, Sekhidi. So basically, you know, in the isolated similarity case, your link is smooth. So you somehow just try to general, like a, basically generalize what the CDS and TN did in the smooth case into their setting. And it can be generalized by that work of for uh, Collins and CPD. Uh, and then you can also develop like a value, evaluative criteria like this Fujitali type theorem. And then you can go to do more to prove that the case stability is uh, K-poly stability is equivalent to kind of a uniform, like a reduced uniform case stability or case stability is uniform case stability. This kind of like, you know, uniform version thing. And uh, I think uh, uh, my student Kai Huang is working on this and it's working in progress. So, 
So, so basically, what I want to say is that there is a natural generalization of like this global collection problem into cone singularity, and it has been studied, and everything can be generalized to, to this thing. Well, or, I mean, at least uh, the statement can be generalized to, I mean, to work out everything you have to do, do to work, so of course, but uh, at least the, the, the statement can be parallel generalized. However, we are not just interested in cone singularity, we are interested in basically all KLT singularity. I mean, that, that's what many more pro program people are interested in. So, right, we, I mean, the cone singularity does play a special role in, in, in the minimum mode program theory, but, but the KLT singularity really does. So, and uh, so our final local stability theory will be something for all singularities. Not as all KLT singularities, not just cone singularity. But that really involves some like a innovative idea to, to, to even just uh, get the picture. That's what I'm going to do now. So, so basically, we look at the valuations with, which is centered on X. So I think now, after the one month program, you probably are probably very familiar with working with valuation. So now we only consider valuations with center and this special point because now we are looking at local setting. And some people call this Narcomedian link, which I think is a quite nice name of, of this space. Then, quite a while ago, and Lauderfeld and, uh, and Karen Smith, they proved, uh, sorry, they define this notion called the volume of valuation. So basically, for adding volume, you can look at the evaluative idea. So, so this is a sequence of ideas, depends on n. So, and then for each fixed n, I look at the functions whose value is larger or equal to n. That's my idea. And then you look at the, the lens of R module an. So because my, because my valuation is centered on this point, this idea is going to be a primary idea primary ideal. So this is going to be the arcing ring. You can talk about the lens. And here, the uh, n is a dimension of the dimension of x. n is dimension of x. So, so, so they define this number. And uh, actually, this number could be zero. The volume could, could be zero. But of course, you know, with, for general divisor evaluation, the, or even cosmonomial evaluation, this number is not going to be zero. I mean, you can easily prove that. However, but for, for general evaluation, it, do, it does could be, uh, I mean, it does happen. Sometimes it could be zero. And then there's another function. There's another function which is called log discrepancy. I think you say this function for divisor evaluation, and you actually say it for cosmonomial evaluation. And uh, then there's a way to extend the, this value definition to, 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 to the entire space of valuations. That, that, that was done by Johnson and Musata. Uh, and uh, so, but, so we are not going to use any valuation outside the cosmonomial ones. So I don't have to, that's why I don't want to give you the way to how to define this for general valuation, but just, just remember there is, one, there is one way to define. So, but the, the key definition, the really, I think, a remarkable definition was made by Chidi. So he defined the volume in, in this way. Here, actually, I have to put a, something like a, that if AX, I actually define to be, to be infinite, if AXV is, is infinite. So it, it, it does happen, as I said, the volume for general valuation the volume indeed could be zero, but it's actually out of Chile's proof that if this guy is zero, then, then this guy has to be infinity. So then in that case, we actually de define that as infinity. So, so and, uh, as I said, at the end of the day, you will see, we will only care about the uh, dividend valuation or, or cosmonomial valuation. Then this, this part, we, we we don't really, it doesn't really happen. So 
I will give you the conjectural picture of why we care about this, this, this environment, because you really see carries a very deep information about the singularity. But let me just first say that uh, Sorry, Chinese definition, it's a big Sorry. leap from the original study by Matelis Fax Yao uh, and, uh, and also Donaldson and Sun. So, so those two works are, I mean, I think give, give inspiration to Chile from different uh, perspective, but they are all uh, kind of uh, analytical work. And uh, so, so I would say that the Chile's definition, even with those two work, is, is really a big leap and, uh, 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 conceptual, uh, conceptual. And uh, next up, so next up, I will basically concentrate on what I mean by the local stability theory. But this was basically originally from a, a sequence of conjectures pro proposed by first Chile and the Chile and myself. But now most of them are already there. Only one still remain to be conjectured, which I will discuss a little bit. So, so okay, uh, this is a page of the statement which we know. And after this page, you probably see why we call it a lo local stability theory. So the, the key is uh, we try to study the minimize Mither of this function. And uh, so the first theorem, I mean, well, the first, one theorem proved by Bloom is that the minimizer always exists. So, so this guy indeed has a minimizer. And uh, it's, it's not there, right? Because I mean, adding V, it's not, it's not going to be zero. So it's. And uh, then last year, to try to myself, we prove that this actually might be unique up to this data. So this is the theorem which I'm going to concentrate on in my talk, in the later part of my talk today. So we prove that this is unique up to this data. But actually we know that this, this minimizer is always causing monomial valuation. So it actually happens that it's not, it could be non dividorial so it's not the case, it's always dividorial. That's not true. But still, it's always cosmic monomial. So this is a little bit different with uh, like what we heard from the lecture series. In the lecture series, we found the, the minimizer of the delta function. But then later we prove that if the, the, we can always actually find the dividorial one, at least when the delta is lesser than one. But in this case, in the, in the local case, it does happen that the, the minimizer because of unique, actually it's, it's always, it's, it's only cosmonomial, but with a higher rational rank. And uh, then Chile and myself, we prove that if we satisfy that the, the gradient ring of this is fine generated. So now we have this valuation sent on this point we can take the gradient ring. So then we, we have this gradient ring we take the spec, that's given x zero. And uh, as you see from Bloom's talk, actually, once you have this valuation, you naturally get a vector, right? And then this vector will be naturally inside the rib cone because basically what's a pairing of weight and the co-weight? That's precisely just the value of, of, of that alpha. But our valuation is, you know, is positive on all the function, uh, function there. So it's going to be positive. So, so, so this is a, some, vec some vector which is uniquely determined by, by V on this degeneration. And now we consider this pair. So we can ask whether it's K-semi-stable or not in the Sasaki Einstein sense. And we prove that once you assume this is fine generated, that, then it's K-semi-stable. So first it has to be K or D and it's actually K-semi-stable. So, and the, uh, but, but actually, conversely, we also prove that if, we, if a valuation satisfies that it's, it's cosmonomial and the, and the gradient ring is fine generated, and such that this is a case is stable, then it has to be a minimizer. So actually, this direction is either. But if you prove that you have all this kind of information, then you show that this minimizes this function. This direction is either. 
So in other words, basically, we just say we have two equivalent definition of the same valuation or the same value up to rescaling. One is consider it as a, as a minimizer, and another one is just consider consider it as a, some valuation which induces me to have a degeneration to some semi stable one. And uh, basically, this picture just say they actually assuming every minimizer is finite generated, then they just say they two actually are just equivalent. To, it's just this equivalent definition of the, of the same thing, and. Uh, this fine generation, I mean, again, in the Dividori case, actually one can really say it's fine generated because it's a complement of some, sorry, sorry, it's an LC place of some local complement. I and mean, this was similar to the, to, to the discussion of the Delta case. But as I will explain at the end of my talk, there is still something we, I mean, we don't know for now. Such that we cannot prove this local fine generation. I mean, you know, you, you, you see this, you immediately see the similarity between this kind of statement with uh, the, the higher rank of fine generation talked about in the, in the talk by Zichuan and the, and the Yu Chen. But I, I will explain why, in the low case, we'll, we still don't know this fine generation and this. So, Cheng Yang, do you expect a similar theory, like for instance, for fanatic morphisms? So, do, do you expect that? For instance, any flip can be uniquely degenerated to some sort of KCMA stable flip. Okay, I, I should think about it. I I haven't thought about it. I mean, there might be something that I haven't thought about. Thought about this. How to how to uh, how to formulate this? Yeah. Thank you for the question. So. So this 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 was. What I just explained that the financial for now is still not known in this local case. And uh, so, so once you assume that, then basically let's say once the singularity can be uniquely degenerate to some case semi stable final cone singularity, we call this kind of thing to be final cone. So, I mean, philosophically, you can think about this as uh, that singularity, besides being KLT, there is no. Local obstruction for final variety to be case in the state. So basically, the KLT similarity, there is no local obstruction to say certain KLT similarity cannot be on some case in the state of final. I mean, that's at least how I understand this kind of a statement. I mean, you know, all I can prove that if I have a final variety, if it's case in stable, then it has to be KLT. But it seems to me that this is the best. The, the best thing that one can one get if you talk about general final world, if you don't uh, uh, specify any other global environments. Okay, so after all this definition, I want to just talk about some examples, like uh, how we see those valuations and uh, uh, like uh, this kind of same state, this kind of picture for, for some special similarities. So first we can define uh, the, Normalized volume, I think actually, sorry, we call the volume of a singularity. We call volume of no normal. We call the volume of a singularity to be the, basically the minimum of the normalized volume for all the values. So then the first thing you want to check is uh, what's the volume of a, of a smooth point? And uh, it, it was actually something proved earlier than this theory by Derfinex Ng and Musata. But you have to combine with some observation made by, by Yusin Liu that for smooth guy, this volume is just n power to n. And uh, the unique valuation which comp computed is just a standard bar. So you just can't, I mean, I think that anyone can calculate the, vo the volume of the normal volume of a standard bar, and you will see it's, it's n power to n. So, but as I said, even to get this without, I mean, historically, you actually have to use some like a paper written by Delphinex in Musata and then combined with some of the which made by Liu. I mean, of course, by now, there are many, there are many other arguments uh, way to prove it. So for cultural similarity, then 
Actually, and I'll prove that the, the volume will be n power to n divided by the order of g. So here, when it's putting a similarity, I assume that any there is no like a reflexive element in, in, in the group action. So so basically, you can you can you can even say that the the valuation which calculates the minimizer is, is precisely the descent of the standard bar onto your quotient similarity. Because you know the standard bar you generate your smooth point to a cone over PN, PN minus one. Of course, PN minus one in case any stable. And now this picture will just descend your, your similarity to the cone over PN minus one quotient by some group. But, you, but because PN minus one is, in, is uh, case semi stable, then the quotient is always case semi stable. The, the other way is more complicated, but, but to prove the, the quotient of case semi stable is case semi stable, that's standard. So, so this way, we, we got this quotient value. And actually, in the work by Chile and Vincent Liu and Chile myself, we calculate all the ADE singularity in all dimensions, except the one case that the four dimension D4. So, so what we, we're doing here is that all these guys are hypersubject singularity. So we basically just look at the, the weighty blow up of, the, of, this, of this embedding. And then we just, among all those weighty blow up, we choose the one which has a minimum volume. And now we just constantly on this valuation and try to prove it's case semi stable. So for instance, if it's a, if it's a divisor valuation, now you just kind of, you know, you, since you say it, it, it comes from a like, like color component, and then you just try to prove this color component is case semi stable. And in the higher run case, it needs a little more work. But actually, we just use some statement people already know about, like a, some final variety or, or final constant, like to be case semi stable. And then we just try to prove that. So, so, so for this one, we have also do the calculation. And then we find some like three dimensional final varieties, which we cannot find in the literature it's case semi stable. I'm pretty sure people can prove it's case semi stable if people like spend enough time to do it. And I encourage you, I mean, no, anyone who is interested to try to try to do it. But we but we cannot find this one in the literature. That's why we left it as an unknown, but we prove everything else in three things. But but one thing I want to say that the higher ranks do appear again. So actually, historically, let me say, when people first started the computer, there was a time people actually conjecture. Uh, like, I mean, there, for instance, there was some, there was some like, invention paper, you find that in, in the paper, people conjecture. In this case, the minimizer is always rational. So, so basically there's no high rank of case up here. But actually it turns out that, that's, not to be, that's not true. I mean, even for AD similarity, if you work high enough, you find a high rank thing. So, so you say that we cannot just work on the case case you know, in this local picture. And uh, another thing I want to say that Liu and myself, we prove that when, if I look at the dimension or three dimensional singularity, and now we forget the smooth one. So we assume our point has to be singular. Then the volume is, uh, is 16. The, the, the largest volume is 16. And the equality holds if and only if that this singularity is the ordinary double point. So in other words, what I want to say is that the, the, the normalized volume not just measure the smooth one. Actually, we can easily show that all the, non, all the volume of singularity as long as the singular is really less than n part n. So, so the volume first measure the smooth point, but it also should measure the second, uh, like a, like the, the most mild singularity, which is of, of course should be ODG. And uh, however, we can only prove this in two dimensions. Oh, sorry, it's three dimensions. And we expect this to be true in any dimension. And it has like a nice consequence, but uh, we cannot prove it. Because the, our proof in the three dimensional case is really using uh, heavily depends on the classification of uh, three dimensional terminal singularity and also a lot of information of three dimensional canonical singularity. So, so maybe I can take possible. Uh, uh, any questions here? Okay. So, if there, 
No question now, as I said, so there's no I only want to concentrate on one part of the picture, which is uh, the part that the uh, trend and, uh, and I put that the minimal is unique up to, up to this thing. So, so first let me talk about some like consequence of, of this one. So, so, so basically if you once you know the mini, the minimal is, is, is unique, then for instance, you have you can have a quasi tar map between two similarities. I mean, you can assume it's Galois by passing through a cover. Then, of course, the minimizer upstairs will be G invariant because, because it's, it's unique I and mean, you fix the log discrepancy. And if G invariant, then you know it's a pullback from the, from the, from, from the coaching. Then, out of that, you can usually see the volume of the upstairs is the volume of the coaching times the degree of the map. So, so we call this by degree formula. And uh, this way you can actually measure lots of uh, lo local invariants. For instance, we know that the, the local fundamental group of, of, the, of a single point or even just the, the smooth local part of a smooth locus around the singularity. So by, by the theorem of uh, Lucas Brown, we know this is finite. But then we know this, the order of this, sorry, I have to put the order here. The order of this is at the most n power to n divided by, by this guy. Because if I just choose, choose the universal cover of this, it's still clear to singularity that I can put in this formula. But this side is at the most n power to n. And then I know that the, this degree is, is at the most n power to n divided by this. Thing. So somehow, the the lower bound of the normal of the volume give you upper bound of the local power one, and uh, especially if you just apply this to the Cartier index, you basically know that if I if I fix the lower bound of of some like final value, so sorry here okay. here x should be final value x final. So now we come to the global situation. And then uh, we fix the lower bound of the volume. And uh, we also fix the lower bound of the delta environment. Then from this, we can see that the Cartier index is uh, bounded from above by some without by Liu and the Bloom, Bloom Janssen to combine with this code. So in other words, we, I mean, of course, we know that if we, Found the Cartier index, then by the Butter conjecture proved by Peter McCann and myself, we know that this, the, such final values are bounded. So, so, in this way, we prove that the, if you bound the, from the volume from below, of course, positively from below, and on the third time you the point from below, that all such final values are bounded. And this was actually original proved by Chen Zhang, but, but Zhang proof basically relies on Berka's work. Here, what I was saying that you get the stronger information about locally, and then you, you can just rely on a weaker statement of the boundaries of boundaries. Okay, I want to spend a little bit of time to talk about the proof because it has some like an interesting feature which I want to explain to you. So basically the idea is that we actually want to connect two valuations. And basically, we want to study the convexity at least uh, around the minimizer if we assume one of them is minimized. Well, of course, the problem is that we cannot combine connect two valuations, right? I mean, if the two valuations in the, in the same simplex, you can connect them. But the simplex sector is not such a canonic structure in, in, the, in the valuation space. And the, of course, that it may well happen that the two valuations are not in, containing any simplex. So, so the question is how to connect these two valuations. So, so our way is uh, instead of connecting these two valuations, we actually connect the, the attached gradient sequence of ideas. So that's what we're going to do. So, 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 so basically from any valuation, we look at this sequence of valuation ideals. So here we, I already defined what's AIV, but here I allow my 
high true value among all the, let's say, positive integers. And uh, then we can replace the normalized volume of V by the so-called normalized multiplicity. So here, this AI is just this, this ideal sequence. So, so by, by the work of u we know that we can also take the minimum of all this kind of invariants, take the informal, and it also compute the volume of the single line. And uh, so now let's say I have a two valuation V0 and V1. So I, so I choose a parameter which, which try to connect them. This parameter has the problem that when key go to infinity, I basically, then, then if I scale back, I basically just get the A dot here. So again, I mean, you can easily see that this variation doesn't depend, sorry, the right hand side, sorry, not the right, this number, right hand side, that, that is really scaling invariant. So I can always rescale. I won't change the volume, and I don't want to change this side. So I can kind of rescale. So in other words, if I re I let t go to infinity, and then I rescale by one over t, then then this sequence, essentially, you can say that it goes to the ideal sequence of this stuff when t is equal to one. But when t is equal to zero, this goes to the ideal sequence. So th then you don't say this part will just give you zero. Then, then you don't see them except for the first one, which is just a and b zero. So, so that's when b and zero is equal to a and b zero. So, so basically, this way I kind of connect these two ideas, ideal sequence. And then later, we also did this for for globally for filtrations. And in, in the work with uh, Bloom, uh, uh, Yuchen, and uh, Zichuan, and uh, in that work, we learned that. There was, a, oh, sorry, I forget the name. There was a sort of uh, Sebastian Boxon doing considered the same thing in the, in the global setting. And he called that this, this is the geodesic connecting the two non commuting metric. So somehow, you know, the filtration comes down to non commuting metric. So if you have a two non commuting metric, this, this kind of construction is, plays a role like the geodesic in the, in the, in the non-commuting picture. And uh, so, the, anyway, we don't have, we don't need this kind of interpretation. So, but what's the lemma, which actually is a little bit surprising to me in, in our work was, uh, was that if we have two, is, is the following that if I have a two ideal sequence, A dot B dot, then I define this kind of box class to be C dot, in a way that the CN to be the sum of AI in the text BN minus I, but the I is zero on N. So, so basically I just in, kind of intersect them. So basically just come from this way. Then we prove that the, the multiple idea of the same thought is contained in the sum of this, so that the lambda plus mu is equal to T. So this, once you, you believe this is true, it's not terribly hard to prove it. I, I, I mean, we follow some work by Takagi. But, you know, at some point I thought that all this kind of uh, inequality we should be able to find it in, in Lutherfield's book. But certainly we cannot find this one in Lutherfield's book. So somehow we, we so there, there was some time we don't know whether this is true or not. But at the end of the day, we prove it, 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 it's true. So, but this immediately implies that the log kind threshold satisfies this. And of course, we will apply to, to this this kind of later. So, so any question about uh, about what we're doing here? Okay. So once with this lemma, now we try to study the uniqueness. So let's assume that v zero and v both of them are minimizer, and I I can we're scaling them to, to make the log thing to be one. And uh, then I, I make this construction for this V0 and V1. So I have a B here. And I consider this function, which is uh, one plus T power to N. 
times the matrix is here. So, so here I choose this one plus two t because that if I calculate the log time threshold of this guy, then I, I apply this t lemma. I know that this is less or equal to the log time threshold of this one plus log time threshold of this one. But you can see that the log time threshold of this one is, is one because I choose the discrepancy to be one. And the log, log discrepancy of this guy is t because I choose the, again, I choose this to be one. So this is one plus two. So in other words, we know that this is larger than the log time threshold times multiplicity d dot t. Okay. But as I said, we, so, okay, so that's what I wrote here. But if I assume that the, when t is equal to zero, then as I said, this is just normalized volume of, of V zero. And, uh, and I assume V zero is a, is a minimizer. So you have, but we, as I said, by Ethereum's observation, we know that this number, all the increment of this, all this kind of number is, the, is the identical to the increment of the minimum normal volume. So if I choose the zero to be a minimizer, this function is always larger than F zero. This is equal to the volume of V zero because I choose A to be one. That, then, of course, I know the derivative has to be positive, non negative. So now I take the derivative, I just calculate it. And then it has the form that it's n times the volume of something times one. But what's one? One here, remember, this is just my axv with zero. But then there's another term, which is S V zero V. So if you are familiar with Chile's work on, on how he proved the, the evaluative criterion for, for k system of form variety, he had a similar construction. So he, he chose this zero to be the valuation, which is a blow up of a cone single line. And then he chose different direction. And then the direction you can you calculate some no matter what, like that, kind of the derivative, that's going to be the A minus the S, which is the beta invariant you heard before. Here, of course, we're not doing cone similarity. We're completely in a, in a, in a local situation. So, so then what we replace here is kind of a local version of S, which I, I, I'm going to give you the definition. So, so but, but, but roughly speaking, what we, what we're doing here is that we try to, we actually made the Chinese work completely local. So, so in the local, without assuming anything to be cold, you still have this kind of A, A, S, you can still define this thing. So, so particularly, we, we call that the uh, V zero is K semi-stable. If I know if this guy, so here I can put AXV, not AXV. But both of them are one. But I want to say is that if S is less or equal to the AXV, for any V, here I fix my V0. And said I haven't defined what this, I'm going to define it. But let's say if I define this kind of S environment, and if it's less or equal to any log frequency, I call this evaluation to be K semi state. And actually, what we prove is that. The K semi stable valuation is precisely the same as minimizer. So here we already proved that if it's a minimizer, then this number has to be non negative. So, particularly this number, this, this video is K semi stable. Because you no, know, here I choose X to be one, but I always restating. So, so basically, what we did above essentially just proved that any minimum, since I don't in this, uh, in this element here, I don't really use any information about V. I only use the fact V zero to be minimizer here. Otherwise, I don't, I don't, above this, I don't even use anything about V zero. So, so, so this works for adding, up to here, it works for adding two valuations. Up to here, it works for V zero minimizer, V arbitrary valuation. And then we know that for, for that kind of situation, we always have this to be non-negative. So which implies that the minimizer is always k semi state. But we actually want to prove the other way is also 
Right, that and, and in case of the variation is that also minimize that and such variation is unique. So, so how do we prove that? The so so basically the key is how do how do we define this? So so actually there are two ways to define this, and we'll prove it to me. So, you can directly calculate this formula, and the, and the, whatever you calculate out here, you will say it's, it's kind of an in, in, integration form, which is very much like the the integration form in the Fujita least definition of the S bezier. So so that's the one way to define. But you, but also you know there is another way to define S invariant using the Bloom Janssen's way to to write it as the limit of S M invariant. And then it's a non-trivial proof without that the, this limit of SM is actually the same as S. So that's what I'm going to do here. I will just give you a, the definition of a SM function here. And then I just take the S to be the limit. And then you have to prove that the limit sent by this equation. So, so how do I prove SM? So, so remember when we prove that we we'll define the S environment. We we'll also fix the valuation. We we'll look at our sections which are compatible with, with the S V. So here we have a two two valuations. But luckily, I mean it's an observation made by Hamida Zhuang and also by Bookson and Erickson that actually, I mean it's, it's actually just a linear algebra state, uh, statement that if you have a, I have a two valuation on the same vector space. I can choose the basis which is compatible with both of them. So, so, so this is a, I mean, something like a linear as a fact. So that's essentially how we do this. So, so, so basically, we just choose the i to be a basis of the r module a and v zero, and then we try to leave this f i into f i bar, such as if I take the v of them is as large as possible. So this is not exactly the same as I, I said. This is more like the local version of that. But 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 spiritually, uh, I mean, they, they are just the same thing. So I just try to find the basis such as the, as the lifting. I can find the lifting such as the VF is as large as possible. So and then I define this to be SM. So, so roughly speaking, how, how should I think about this number? So what I think about this number is that I basically choose the basis of this, and I look at the vanishing order of V on, on, on that. And uh, then I can compare. So, so this is my SM tilde. I want to basically normalize it. So I basically just compare this one with this one, and I choose, and also divide this one. So, you, so in other words, if I choose the SV to be one, now I just divide this guy by, by this one, which is just the V0 V0. So basically that's just how, so how the, the V0 on this part is going. And then I just compare how V go on, 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 on there. So then I define the limit to be to, to be the S V0 V. And uh, you can again show that the limit is this. So now I want to conclude to say that the if V zero is another minimizer with with the log degree to be one, then it's the same as V. So how do I prove that? So I already know that one is larger than S V zero V by this statement, right? But the, but but in this case, what's S V zero V? So again, you know, look at this. This is just how V0, like a, the value of V0 on the first, like a, as I'm talking about on the first, uh, like M power to N1. Here, what's the value is the, is the V on this kind of thing. So, so particularly this part is larger or equal to the volume of V, right? Actually, it should be a volume power to N plus one over N. Why? Because, you know, this is precisely I choose a basis and I choose V. I look at the values on, on, on there. But this doesn't have to be the, the first, uh, the, the lowest values of V. 
So, so here I just choose, choose the lowest value of V0, and then I look at the value V of them. So that could be larger than the V of on the first lowest, uh, let's say, uh, M elements. So that's why this guy is uh, indeed uh, larger than the volume of V. So then that is I, I, I got this volume V0 divided by volume V, one over N, and then I got V equal to N. So, so, so once you have this, you know that the volume is equal to, if you assume that the volume V is equal to volume V, V0, then you actually know that the asymptotically, the first M, which M's element, which computes the volume of V0, it also computes the volume of V, like the lowest value order of V. So this is just asymptotically, but then it's not hard to prove. If this is asymptotically true, then they actually have to be true on, on the valuation level. So, so that's, you, you prove that the V there is true. So this is how the interpretation works. So basically from here, you know that the, the, if, you, the if you choose the lowest, elements with, with respect to the valuation V0, it basically just gives you the lowest M elements with respect to the valuation V. And then from that, you can prove V0 has to be true. So, so, so this is this, this how, how, how it could be so, so any question about here? Okay. So, the, finally, I want to say a little bit about the final generation problem. So, so remember that we, in Utah and Zichuan's lecture, one key input we put by generation is that we use the fact that the, the final value with a fixed volume with the alpha environment be, bounded from below is bounded. So we have some boundaries. So here, we also want to ask some bounding question, which I believe is very closely related to the fine jacket here. And it will, we might don't need such as strong as what I formulated here, but itself, I believe is an interesting question. So, but actually there's even more general question is what I call the, the discrete kind of So, so basically this kind of says that if I look at a fixed dimension, I think I look at all the possible volume. Then I would say that there has a it has a unique accumulation point of view. So, so in other words, the 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 volume of the, all the possible volumes form a discrete set, if, except uh, from zero. And uh, actually, what the geometry behind this is, is even stronger. That I believe. The, the, I, I, I believe that this, the, what's true is that if I fix the volume bounded from below at a fixed dimension, that all the singularities degenerates to a bounded family of singularities of like k semi stable final cone singularities. So, so, so th that's what I uh, believe to be true. So, so, so you see how the boundaries come, come into picture from this. But particularly, if we only consider the 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 final the the so-called constant regular case, so basically the case that the the rank is, is equal to one, so it's really from a C star code. Now, what I'm looking at is uh, I just look at all the case semi stable final world, and now, but you know, here I can make this code not just this like a Cartier divider, I can use a weight divider. I can still also formulate the code. But then I, I, I use this, sorry, this is minus kx is equal to m times b. This d, I, I need it to be some like an integral weight divider. But this m is some like a number. So, so what I see, then the volume, if I use, if I consider the singularity to be the cone of, uh, X, but now I use D. I use this weight divider, I can still formulate the code. Then the volume of this will be 
Oh, so I, I should call this maybe one. This is precisely the m times minus k is part of m. So, so there is a way in that place here. Then, if, then if, I, if I use above philosophy, that says that I fix the lower bound of the volume. Now, all such kind of similarities should be bounded. Then that means the x itself is actually bounded. So in other words, I mean, if I don't have this n here, then of course this is just the, the original junk theorem that we know it is bounded. But here actually I allow myself to times uh, to scale it by a by, by some like a way index. I mean, if it's that that that's that, that very easy. But I allow myself to to to, to scale by way index, and then I still assume this this is bound. I, uh, Assume this has to lower bound that I still want to get this bound. So in other words, I really don't want to happen that this guy go to zero, this guy go to infinity, but then their product is still bounded from below. So I don't think that to happen. You know, I sort of believe that with BAB in hand, we should be able to prove any boundaries without a profound overarching, but, but there is one which we don't know how to, how to, how to do. So I think uh, anyone who is interested should uh, 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 in balance of bottom right, could take a look at this. One. And uh, this can be true for three dimensional, actually, sorry, terminal similarity, because they use strongly the fact that this terminal similarity is a hyper plane similarity, and there's a very more two action there. And uh, there's a very more two action on the similarity. So, so, so this can be true. By for three dimensional terminal, but even for three dimensional Cartier, uh, sorry, canonical similarity, we, we don't know. It. I mean, for the examples, we I show you, of course, we don't know. Of it. But in general, actually, it's not clear to me how this kind of boundaries should should follow from. So I, I find this to be a highly uh, interesting question, and uh, it's related to the to the level of the thing. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, this is all what I have. Thank you, Ching Yang. Uh, does anybody have any questions for Ching Yang? So does this as, uh, oh, does, uh, does uh, uh, S V zero V have linear around the min minor? I mean the local S invariant. Is that okay? Oh, it's a linear. No, I, 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 I don't. Oh, sorry. Uh, let me see. Let me see. I think once you have a final generation, the S, let's see. Uh, no, I mean, because I think the F tilde might be, but then there is some like a normal, uh, some, some normal, I don't know. Uh, Yeah, I, I, probably, probably it's not linear. I mean, anyway, I think once you have you have this fine generation, then you, you move on to v zero. It's just uh, some like a uh, elementary fact about about some like uh, you know function or some semi group. I think that shouldn't be too hard to check. I mean, it's probably not a linear. So 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 I think the the S invariant it has two variables, right? So um, there there are two valuations involved. So I think if you fix the first valuation, it behaves like the S invariant in the global setting. So if you have finite generation, it should be linear at the minimizer. But if you vary the first variable, the V0, um, then the, this, um, this, this funnel also changes. Then I'm not sure whether it will be um, linear there. So it should be linear in the second variable when you have the minimizer there. But yeah, for the yeah, first yeah. variable, we it's unclear. We fix the first to be minimizer and uh, look at second. Yeah, then, then it should be linear there, yeah, I guess. So, so uh, is it equivalent to the finite generation? I mean, the linearity and the finite generation is local set. Um, it should be, uh, but uh, I, I forget the trend also. We actually use the, we go through the boundaries to get the finite generation, right? You want to assume the li linearity. 
Yeah, but I think the, the, the point is that the boundedness is missing. So um, yeah. yeah. Okay, thanks. So, so essentially these special complements that you use in the projective case, we don't know if they exist on the, on the local case. I mean, the, the, the thing is, uh, I mean, in the global case, we, we control this special complement and then we got a sequence of uh, valuation. We know that the generation has the alpha render to be bounded from below. And then we conclude the boundaries there. So here we we are lack of the you know the conclusion from the alpha event below to the boundaries. Right. So, so you can degenerate to something, but then we don't have the boundaries of the assets. Okay, if there's no further questions, then let's thank Chen Yang again. Thank you very much. So since, I, since I'm the last speaker, uh, although I'm an organizer, uh, also, I, I think I want to thank the other organizers for, <laughs> for, for, for organizing this wonderful program. Yeah. Thank you and hope to see all of you in person in the near future. Uh, thanks so much.